Okay, I wanted to mention here in this video and remind everybody that in 2000, in uh, March of 2015, I spoke a prophecy in the church where I said, uh, Russia, uh, I can't remember the exact sequence it was, but it was Russia, Iran, Turkey, and North Korea are planning on destroying America. And Obama was part of it, okay? Is part of it. That was the prophecy was uh, Russia, North Korea, Iran, and Turkey are planning to destroy America, and Obama is part of it. That was the prophetic word I got in 2015. I put it on YouTube in, I think it was March, okay? Now, at that time, China was not involved. It was only after the Taijing bombing that. China got involved, okay? But here's what's going on. The reason uh, they're trying to get North Korea and um, Iran are so badly trying to get nukes is because what the plan was, this is what Russia and China wanted to do, is they wanted to arm North Korea with nukes and have North Korea launch the nukes. And then Russia and China would step back and say, oh, we that's in other words they wanted to limit the re, the retaliatory strike from the United States to just a small region of North Korea and and now Iran in hopes that they could destroy America and the only counter strike would only destroy let's say North Korea and the area of uh Iran okay so that plan didn't work because we're privy to that, and we have God giving us knowledge. I know Donald Trump's a Christian, so he he at least listens to prophecy and knows what's going on as far as that that's concerned. But that was their plan, was to try to have North Korea launch the nukes. Meanwhile, Kim Jong-un would sneak into China while that's going on. Then the counter-strike would be against uh, just that region of North Korea, and hopefully... North Korea could launch ju uh, just enough nukes to destroy the United States or whatever they had planned. But Iran, Russia, Turkey, and North Korea have been planning this for a long time. And then, of course, China got involved and got on board after Taijing was bombed. And if you don't know about the Taijing bombing, it's Tianjin. Type that out, T-I-A-N-J-I-N, explosion in YouTube, and you'll see that happened after March of 2015, but that was when, and and it was Hillary Clinton's idea to do that, and that's why Russia had threatened thermonuclear war if Clinton wins the election in 2016. See, a lot of people don't know this. I know this by the Holy Spirit. The Lord reveals it to me. Same way that I know that Edward Snowden ha is the guy who uh, leaked all this military information from DARPA, NORAD, uh, CIA, Department of Defense, all sorts of hard drives and uh, computer uh, hack, basically, um, by way of Edward Snowden. And just remember, Edward Snowden, first place he went was Venezuela. Then from Venezuela, he went to China. And then from China, he went and resided in Russia. Okay? And also, Russia and China became... Or Russia became very belligerent as right after Edward Snowden did his little espionage thing. And Edward Snowden was a Russian spy from the start. And Obama, if Russia was hacking elections in 2016, and uh, think about... They were probably hacking elections in 2000, 2008, and that's how Obama got uh, got um to w got to the presidency so quickly uh, by Russian hacking of elections. Everybody's gonna say, "Oh, that's all conspiracy theories." Remember, the last two years of the Obama administration had Black Lives Matter riots in every city all across the nation. Police officers were being shot and killed, and Obama did nothing about it. Plus, ISIS rose up during the Obama admi administration, and Obama says, "Oh, that's the JV team." Interesting thing, he would call them the JV team because remember, 
the varsity team and the JV team both share the same mascot, and essentially they're on the same side and on the same team. It's just the quarterback for the JV team is just next year's quarterback for the junior for the senior team. If, anyway, if you remember Obama, also Obama, he got up there and said um, ISIS isn't Islamic because they behead other Muslims. He, in, in a sense, he was acknowledging that yeah, Muslims kill Christians. But they're not supposed to kill other Muslims. Another thing is, if you look at Benghazi, remember Ambassador Stevens was killed. Obama had Ambassador Stevens killed in the same way, and I, and this is a biblical event, in the same way that David had Uriah the Hittite killed. Okay, Uriah the Hittite was was basically in a war zone. I'm just saying. Obama murdered Ambassador Stevens by way of Benghazi, okay? And um, so keep your eyes out for World War III because it's about to go full-scale thermonuclear. I'm not sure exactly when, but I do also know that the United States is scheduled to revamp our our, uh, ground-based nuclear arsenal starting this year. And being complete by by before the elections are uh, before the end of t- 2020. So basically, um, our submarine launched missiles have been updated, and all our other arsenal has been nuclear arsenal has been updated. But our ground launched silo based nuclear arsenal is due to be updated this year, and so I think they're wanting to to do their thing, their nuclear strike. Before we revamp and update the, um, because I'm pretty sure the United States at this point has nuclear glide missiles, hypersonic, uh, re-entry vehicles, uh, I mean, we developed, the, the Russian technology, the technology that Russia has for the hypersonic missiles is, is, was developed by NASA, and they were testing it in like 2010, and Obama cut the, cut the budget and cut the the program and then somehow all that information was leaked to Russia and, to Russia and China by way of Edward Snowden I'm just saying so all that hypersonic missile technology that Russia has really was developed by NASA in like 2008 and 2010 I'm just saying Obama cut a bunch of really good DARPA programs that were later on leaked to Russia and China, and Russia basically continued the development of these programs that all the original research was done by the United States, either by NASA, DARPA, or whatever, you know, Department of Defense, whatever. So a lot of their technology was technology that we had developed, and then Obama comes in and cuts that program and then gives the information to Russia. I'm just telling you, and those who don't believe what I'm saying is true, I had a vision of Obama talking to a group of Muslims and he was explaining to them that when we dis- when we planned on nuking America and destroying America, we were very careful to do it in the most environmental way. And all these Muslims were cheering him, yay, he's our Mahdi, and they were all excited, and they were like, in other words, Obama was taking credit for destroying America and being exalted and glorified by the whole world of Islam. Obama's going to come back and he's going to be the Antichrist, I think. I'm not saying that. The Lord's never told me, but he did tell John Roy- John Rice back in 2007. He was, like, he was telling me, don't vote for Obama. He was like freaking out about Obama. And I was like, dude, you're crazy. What's up with you? And when Obama got elected, he left the country. So he was right about that. The Lord spoke to him back then. The Lord still, I keep seeing visions and, and having indications that Obama is the Antichrist. But the Lord's never specifically came out and told me. But I just had a vision of Obama the other day explaining to a bunch of people in, in the world of Islam after World War III uh, how they decided to only nuke certain places and to try to be as economically friendly, the most, uh, not not economically, but environmentally friendly nukes and all this. Or they chose targets to to be as limited as possible uh, for for environmental reasons and all this. Meanwhile, they're cheering Obama 
And this is like the week after, this is like right after World War III, before the climate has actually changed as a result of the thermonuclear war. So he's all talking about how, yeah, we did it all to be, we were very careful about climate, about the environment when we planned on how we are going to nuke the United States and taking all sorts of credit for it. And everybody's cheering and cheering. But within a year or two, the climate is going to be so cold it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little while to reverse global warming. But in two years, it's going to be freezing cold in the middle of summer, like in Southern California. I'm just saying. And um, after World War III, I mean. And then you see in the Bible, it shows a nuclear winter where people are dying from huge hailstorms. So get ready for World War Three. God is good. Jesus is Lord. Time is running out. It's the end of the age. So when you see this happen, you should be excited. Okay? You shouldn't be mourning and freaking out and running around going, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like, what do I do? What do I do? You should already have known that World War Three is coming. Your heart should already be have already accepted that. And you should already be ready to stand firm in your faith in the face of the mark of the beast. But all these people who say, oh no, the rapture's all going to happen before any of that. And these people who say, when the bombs come down, we go up. You're all going to learn that the rapture's going to happen after the mark of the beast comes out. And it's going to be great distress, unequaled from the beginning until now. And never to be equaled again. And then, when that last foolish virgin finally falls away from the faith. Then the bridegroom, the bridegroom will come. <laughs>